Hey there, giant fans of fun. It's Thad, the theme park giant, and I'm coming to you from my office today. It's been a while. Uh, the last update I put out was after the opening night of Halloween Horror Nights, uh, which was on August 30th. I went back to Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios on Sunday, September 1st. Wrapped up everything I hadn't done the first night and was fully prepared to put out a video to review every house, every scare zone, things like that. Uh, and then by the time I got home from the park that Sunday night, I was completely exhausted to the point where the next morning when I woke up, I had full blown COVID and I've been sick for about, well, it's the 11th of September today. So I'm going on like nine days now. I actually feel really good now. I think I'm back to normal. I think I might go to Halloween Horror Nights tonight. I've just been really tired this week, but last week was miserable. So I apologize for not getting this out sooner, but for now, we're just gonna go to the park real quick, get a couple updates. It was pouring that night, uh, so I didn't have my good camera out. Didn't do a whole lot of updates either. And that was also part of the reason I thought I was like feeling sick when I left, because it was just kind of cold and rainy. But uh, yeah, so we'll head to the park. We'll check out a few things, and then I'll come back here and I'll wrap up all my opinions on Halloween Horror Nights after doing each of the houses, and uh, we'll go from there. So. Let's go to basically two weeks ago and uh, check out Halloween Horror Nights. So up here by the Minions Cafe and the Bake My Day, we're gonna go past there to get to the New York one. We went to the World Expo the other day. Tonight we're trying New York. So we're gonna do Ghostbusters first. And this will show you the four houses that this fan scream. Uh, area will allow you into before the park, before the official event opens. Uh, Ghostbusters and Insidious open at 5.15. So off to the left you've got Quiet Place and then Insidious and Ghostbusters both funnel into the same line. Alright, we've been standing here waiting for about a half hour and it is just pouring so the umbrella's coming in handy but I'm still pretty wet but I think it's keeping the crowds down okay so it's five o'clock and as you can see they are opening up the actual lines now so we're gonna go get in line for Ghostbusters and hopefully get through it pretty quick but it is still pouring Okay, so we got right into Ghostbusters because everyone went to Insidious. I planned that poorly. So go to Insidious first. Uh, but Ghostbusters, a lot of nostalgia. I love Ghostbusters is one of my favorite movies, so I loved it. I haven't really seen the new ones, but you don't really need to to understand the story. A lot of Stay Puft Marshmallow Land references, but I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Not super scary or anything, but uh, so now after that, we had to loop all the way back to the end of the Sand Scream line for Insidious again, and it's looping back here to the streets of New York. It's probably going to be quite a bit of a wait, but that's Hollywood Horror Nights. Okay, so we did Insidious, probably waited 30 to 35 minutes for it. I don't think it's nearly the terrifying experience that everyone else online has made it out to be, but I actually really like the house. Might be in my top two or three, I'll have to think about it. Uh, the park just opened. Well, actually the event hasn't actually started yet because it's 6.15, so we're gonna do the Slaughter Cinema and then my friend Rob has not done the museum yet, so we're gonna do that next. And Slaughter Cinema 2 is back here by Men in Black. 15 minute wait. We're gonna hop in. House number three is done, the Slaughter Cinema 2. I never saw the original, but I really like this one. It's just kind of a campy, fun, grotesque. It's like a lot of fake horror movies that this company made and you're actually walking through like the films but I really liked it. Uh, it's a lot of goofy, gory, like I said, good old-fashioned campy kind of 80s B-movie horror, but 
that's just a fun one. And we are doing museum. My friend has not done it yet. I did it the other night, but I'm gonna do it with him. And then I still have to do quiet place, and then we will have done all ten each of us. Wait time said 45. We got through about 15. They always kind of inflate them at first and mess around. So just keep your eye on the app. Okay, so that was my second time through museum. I liked it even more this time. I picked up a little more on the story, but it's still not really... There's not much story to it. There's a rotting stone artifact that is basically making everything bad. So, but beautiful set pieces. I love the costumes in there. It's not super scary. It's just a good house. Uh, it's about seven o'clock. And we're heading back. We're going to redo the monsters, Universal Monsters, and the goblins. We already did those the other night, but it's five minutes and ten minutes for those houses right now. So since we're back here, we may as well take advantage of it. And then I'll go knock out the quiet place and be done. Okay, the sun has gone down. We have knocked out five of the houses. We had to wait about 25 minutes for the monsters. It was a lot better this time around for me. I saw more of the effects. I do love the set design on that. The story's really cool. The characters are cool. And now finally we're gonna go. I need to get in line for a quiet place and that'll be my 10th and final house. And then we're hoping to get on Velocicoaster. Fingers crossed. Park's open till nine. We wanna get a night ride. So hoping to get on this pretty soon and hightail it over there. So it is 9.15, I'm done. The park was getting packed. As you can see, the crowds are just pouring in right now. Islands of Adventure closed at nine, so I mean, every single person walking in here is going to Hollywood for nights. It's a definite late arriving crowd tonight with the storms. We got six houses done in just a little over, a little under four hours. So I'll have more a full review of all 10 houses when I get home, but I just wanted to show how crazy it is here right now. You can see over there, that's the parking entrance to the ramp, and it is backed up. Always be prepared for that. If you know where the alternate tow booth entry is, I would take that. Kind of a secret I don't want to give out, I'll be real honest, because I pulled right in today. And we're back, giant fans of fun. Obviously not a huge update from in the park with the weather that night. There just wasn't a whole lot to really be taking in, but hopefully the stay and scream stuff is helpful. Um, they've cleaned that up a lot. They usually do after the first weekend or so. And from what I saw that Friday night compared to what I saw that Sunday, the New York Stay and Scream was a lot more organized. I mean, it's still, I think, too many houses for one Stay and Scream, but, you know, whatever. Um, and it just seems like, from what I've seen on, like, wait times and things and just other friends going to the event, everyone's going to New York at the start. So they're all the big houses. They're the most popular ones. So just didn't seem really balanced uh, very well with that. But... You can still get a lot done with the sand scream. It is totally worth it. So we're gonna move on here and I am gonna go through all 10 houses and I'm gonna rank them from my least favorite all the way to number one. Surprise, that's how you do rankings. So let's get right to it. House number 10, without a doubt, I think it's the one house that just didn't hit on any note for me. It's the Triplets of Terror. It's a very just standard haunt. Um, you know, you've got three crazy murderers on the loose, basically terrorizing this family. You're going through their house, but I don't know. This one just didn't really do much for me. It seems to be the unanimous kind of least favorite house from what I'm hearing um, based on other reviews and just other friends that I've talked to, but number 10 for me, um, nothing really that I can even like call out as like a standout moment. So from here on, you know, nine and up, uh, 
I think all the houses from here on out are actually pretty good to great. Um, so even though I'm going to put it ninth, I think the museum deadly exhibit is a really cool house. Uh, some of the best characters, uh, or monsters or whatever you want to call them, scare actors, just the design of some of them really, really cool. I like this set. Um, it's just the storyline's a little confusing. They don't really say a whole lot. There's a rotting stone artifact, you know, that is like a new thing at the museum. There's banners. You hear a little outside as you're walking in, like talking about the exhibit, but clearly that's the thing that's causing things to go awry. Um, but like I said, I, I really love the characters in here, but the story is probably my biggest issue with it. It just doesn't really do much. You're just walking through a museum where things are, have gone wrong. But like I said, I actually think it is like a beautiful house. Um, I think it's really well themed, uh, just lacking in story a little bit. But for number nine, this is a really good house. House number eight, Major Sweets Candy Factory. Now, I feel like this one's one of the houses that you get a lot of people that don't really like it at all. Some people love it. I really liked it the first night I did it after just going through more houses and things like that. I, I dropped it. Um, it is a pretty just standard factory type uh, haunt. Um, I love the idea, like the candy, candy factory run amok. Anything with like where like a kid's type thing kind of goes crazy. I always like those ideas. I think this is a cool house. Uh, I like the idea of it. It's really gory. Um, not super scary per se, kind of that goofy B movie type house slasher gory type thing. Um, not a ton of jump scares or anything, but I did really like this house. Uh, I think there's some cool effects in there. There's a taffy stretcher part that you have to see, but pretty gross. But, uh, all in all, I really do like Major Sweets Candy Factory, but I'm gonna put it at number eight. House number seven, Universal Monsters Eternal Bloodline. I really wanted to like this one, like love it. I think coming into this year's event, I was looking more forward to this because the Universal Monsters, I love the Universal Monsters. Um, last year, I really liked the house. Uh, I know it's like a staple of HHN to have the Monsters house. I thought the story, is super cool on this that it's van helsing's daughter you know and she's kind of fighting other female monsters or daughters of like the universal monsters um the characters are awesome the story is done really well done you, you kind of, you're getting told even more as you're like going through the house i always like when they do that um but i just I just think I've had really bad luck both times I've gone through because I don't feel like I'm seeing everything that's happening because I hear other people like rave about this house. The sets are really cool. The characters are awesome. The story's great, but like there's no, I'm missing the big like events when I walk through this house. I know I mentioned that in my first video, but I just didn't get any like big, there, there's a, there's a cool part with like Frankenstein, um, but for all the other things, I felt like I was walking through and I had just missed what was supposed to happen or I was about to miss it. So I would love to rank this higher because everything tells me it's a really good house. It's just I haven't seen the execution of it. So I have to rank it seventh. Coming in at number six, I'm going to go with Slaughter Cinema 2. I never saw the original. This is a, obviously a very popular house because this one gets pretty busy. Um, so like people must be excited that it's back. I really liked this one. Um, it's a lot of like how I take it. It's a lot of like seventies and eighties B type horror movie. Just these slasher gory flicks really over the top. A lot of times with like just the, the stories and the characters. Um, and what this one, so each little area you go through, there's kind of a, a break between the sets where you go through a little hallway or whatever, and it has like the movie posters for
for the next movie you're about to go in. So there's like stripper mummies is one of them, I think. Uh, I'm I can't. I'm drawing a blank on some of the like movies, but they're all like funny. Um, I really like this house. It's it's just that campy, gory, like I said, B movie type house, but they just knock it out of the park. And you really feel like you're like going into the movie each time, which almost feels like a B movie in itself to like be trapped in like other horror movies. So I really like this one. Um, it's, it's hard to even rate it six because I really do like it, but I just think the other houses are just a step up, but Slaughter Cinema two definitely a thumbs up. Number five, we reached the top five now. I'm going to go with A Quiet Place. Uh, I've never seen any of the movies. Uh, I've seen plenty of clips and things on YouTube and just whatever. I understand the premise of it. There were some really cool sets in this. I think the monster, the costumes are great. And then I think this has the best scare of HHN this year. Um, the first 30 seconds or so. I think is absolutely the best scare. I don't typically get super jump scared or whatever, but this one had me on edge as I was going through it. Um, and yeah, they pull it off. Now, you know, there's the, if you stay quiet, things will be different, all that. that that's just so hard to gauge when you're with groups of people that aren't actually in your party because people are screaming all the time or whatever. So. That's one thing that does kind of stink about this experience that if your group's going through totally quiet, you might have a completely different experience, which I don't know if that's cool or not, honestly. So um, it sounds like I don't like the house after all that, but I really like this house. And like I said, actually scary, uh, great sets, awesome like animatronics, puppets, things like that. Um, definitely a top five house even if you haven't seen the IP, which I haven't. And another movie franchise that I have never seen coming in at number four, I don't watch a lot of horror movies. So I don't watch a lot of movies anymore, long story short. But Insidious, The Further, I do really like the design of this house. I think this is a truly like scary haunted house for most, most people. I think the how terrifying it is is a little oversold or just maybe some people just aren't cut out to come to haunts if they're going to have a complete panic attack in something like this. But um, I do really like this one. There's some really good scares. Couple rooms are fantastic. Uh, I do think it's a little too bright in one of the rooms to really pull off the trick for, I think, more seasoned people where if you're just terrified, you're you don't care how bright it is, you're gonna be scared. So like for me, it was kind of easy to pick out what was real and what wasn't in the one room. I'm trying not to spoil too much here, but I could see how that's an absolutely terrifying house for people. Um, but I thought it was really well designed. Um, like I said, I don't, I've never seen the movies. I know the stories. I do enough research before HHN and I, I think they did a really good job with this. Although. I have heard some, like, when you go into the further, you know, in the movies, it's like fog everywhere, it's darker, and they don't really do that here, um, where if, when you're walking through the house, if it was darker and there was fog, I think it could really be a terrifying experience, even for a guy like me that doesn't really get scared in these things. Just a few things they could have improved on, but an awesome house nonetheless. All right, we made it to the top three, and the top three is going to start with one of my all-time favorite movie, I'd say franchises, but I really just love the first Ghostbusters. The first Ghostbusters is a top five movie for me. I don't care what genre you're talking about. I absolutely love it. It is hilarious. It's just a really well-done movie. I love Ghostbusters. So I was really excited for Ghostbusters to have a house this year. I have not watched the last two sequels. I think there's been two with the kids. I saw the all female one a few years ago, but I've not seen the newer ones. So I was a little worried going in, am I gonna be missing stuff? 
you don't need to know anything about those movies. I mean, if you know anything about Ghostbusters, this will tickle all the nostalgia factor for you. Um, lots of Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, lots of just Ghostbuster references that are going to hit home for you. Uh, I thought that the sets were fantastic. Uh, tons of characters too, really good character interactions. Like, you know, you got like the actual Ghostbusters coming up and like talking to you or whatever. Um, I, I really liked it. And like I said, you don't need to know the movies as you're going through. And they actually do kind of tell the story as you're going through too. It's another one of those houses where they're filling in the plot line with like the way people are talking or things like that. So, I absolutely loved it. It's fun, it can be scary, and it's just a visually impressive house. So, Ghostbusters, number three. And my runner-up for HHN Houses 2024 at Universal Orlando, I'm going with Goblin's Feast. This house is so fun and goofy and gory and just... I think it's what I love in a house. It's, I love goofy horror and like this is just kind of one of those whimsical little fun things it starts out as and then you kind of just slowly realize, uh oh, the feast that I've been invited to, maybe not, is, is not maybe gonna be a good feast for me. So, uh, I really like it. The characters are awesome, they're gross. The interactions are funny. They'll like talk to you. It's, I just, it, it warms my heart that there's a house like this. I think Goblin's Feast may actually probably be my favorite, but I'm not gonna rate it number one. Just be, well, that doesn't make any sense. It's my, it's my second favorite. It's super fun. Just makes me smile. I can't wait to do it again. Um, but Goblin's Feast, two thumbs up on that one. All right, we're at the final house for the 2024 Hollywood Horror Nights, Universal Orlando. And it is, to me, the biggest surprise, uh, Monstrous, the Monsters of Latin America. I had no expectations at all for this. I'd barely even read on the house. I was like, okay, they're gonna be like Latin American monsters. This house is scary. This house has amazing characters amazing sets. I love the story. It's disturbing to say the least. Um, essentially, it's a lot of like child sacrifice and things, I think, to appease the monsters in the village or city. Um, you see some really graphic things. Uh, there's a woman eating a baby uh, in one of the houses with pretty awful noises happening. Um, there's really cool little details. Like you'll pick up, like there'll be empty cribs in like the alley by a doorway. So like they left their kid and there's just like blood spots where the crib, where the baby was. It's very disturbing, but this house, hey Berkeley, this house I think top to bottom is the best for everything. Uh, I mean, not much comedy in this one, but the scares, costumes, the characters, the sets, the story. I love it all. Definitely number one. I know I love Goblin's Feast, but like this thing is, I think it's a masterpiece in terms of what you can do with a haunted house. All right, there you go, giant fans of fun. We have got, covered it all. I, uh, I actually shot this once last week and uh, it was so bad. I had to redo it because I looked and sounded so horrible. Um, I should put some of that up just so you know how sick I was. But I'm glad we finally got to this. Sorry it took so long. And I'm jonesing to get back for some more Hollywood Hor Horror Nights because I only have the September pass this year, so I missed a whole weekend. Uh, I've got some time to make up here. I think I have three more weekends. So we're going to be getting out there for more Hollywood Horror Nights fun. I'm still getting that Stay Puff s'more, definitely. So watch for that on like TikTok or something. But that'll probably be next time I go, I'm gonna get that s'more. Um, yeah, I, uh, 
The scare zones, um, I'll just throw a quick ranking up here. If you want more info on those, when I walked through them on the first night, I have more on that. So check out my first video, but here's my rankings on those. Only a couple good ones this year. I'm actually kind of disappointed with the scare zones altogether, but you can't have everything. So, and maybe they're better now. It's, as time goes on, things improve with Horror Nights. So, that's gonna do it for this video. I appreciate the patience. Uh, I'm sure you were all really missing me. But, I'm back. I've got some really cool stuff coming up this week that I can't talk about right now and I'm hoping to do some videos on because as a theme park fan, this will be pretty cool stuff. So, more on that to come, hopefully this weekend if I get some clearance to record for my friends on that, it could be pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's my early review of Hollywood Horror Nights 2024. Make sure you get out there. I think it's a great event this year. I was kind of down on it the first night. Um, I, I actually said at one point, I'm like, I think I like last year better, but I do not believe that anymore. I think the houses just are better in general this year. Uh, like I said, I think only Triple to Terror is a flop. So, great job Universal, another awesome event. Um, I do need to check the show and the Tribute Store out too, so I'll be doing that. I did hear the show's been changed a bit this year, so I'm excited to see it. I just had not had time the first two nights. I was trying to get the houses done. But, that's gonna do it for this one. I'm gonna quit yapping and uh, Thank you for watching. If you appreciate this kind of content, give the channel a like, uh, or give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, all that stuff, so you know when I put new footage out, new con content out, I can't speak, I still have COVID brain. Um, but yeah, gonna be a lot more content coming. I'm excited, because I'm going stir crazy. I've been in my house for almost a week and a half, nonstop, I need to get out to a park, so. Thanks for going on this crazy journey with my COVID brain and uh, we will see you next time.